ended up in jails and, and, and prisons. I think that's as much as the human prison ministry. It's a preventive maintenance so that we can we can be big brothers and big sisters, you know. We can we can teach, you know, our kids. And you know, these kids, you know, uh, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way that they should go. When they get older, they won't depart. You know, there's so much more that I can talk to you about this morning concerning the vision of this church. But, beloved, you know what? I mean, God promised 31 years ago now that if I'm going to serve you, Lord, I want to do it as right as I can. And what I mean by that is I want to be real. I want to be real 24-7. I don't want to be one way when I'm here in church and be, some, uh, be something else somewhere else. I want to be the same. Facades, you know, no plastic. What you see is what you get. You know, Philippians 2 12 says to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. So, you know, we're to examine ourselves. You know, it's doing what you sincerely believe in your heart to be right according to the word. It's doing the next right thing. You know, sometimes we get so confused and the pressures of this life can, can be so overwhelming. But make it simple. Just do the next right thing. Do the next right thing. House of prayer is real. No hidden agendas. No five o'clock surprises. No white sepulchers full of dead men's bones. Why is this so important? Because James 4 and 6 says, God resists the proud. But He gives grace to the humble. So are we saved by pride? We're saved by grace. So we got to keep the grace coming. Pride is a cork. It stops up the flow. It stops the, the, the outpouring. So we want to, we don't want no pride going on. We want we want grace flowing. And 1 Peter 4 and 8 says that love covers a multitude of sins. So what I'm saying here is, is what I said a while ago after reading everything that we did for last year. Paul says, you know, though I give my body to be burned. You know, if I give away everything that I got to the poor, if I do all of these things and I don't have love, I'm nothing. I'm nothing at all. Nothing but a sounding brass that <coughs> puts and so the important thing is, is that, you know, how are people going to know if this is a New Testament church or not? John 13, 35 says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Amen. And Paul said in the last verse of 1 Corinthians 12, 31, after using this whole chapter and talking about the gift of tongues, he said, and yet, I want to show you in a more excellent way. And then he spends the entire 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians in telling us how we're supposed to love one another. Praise God. And this truly is the bottom line here. God's plan is that His love rules so strong in this place that people can't help but notice. People can't help but follow Jesus Christ. They can't help but fall in love with Him. See, it's, 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 it's following Him and then when we fall in love with Him, then we find out the other things that we're so captured by, they're not near as important anymore. And our problems don't seem near as big in, in, in the light of the Lord. Amen. And so people can't help but get saved, healed, and delivered. And so God has a perfect plan. And I am so thankful this morning that He's called all of us from the four corners of the earth. Amen. And, and this vision is being extended. Praise God. And we get to pass this thing on together. We get to work together as a family, praise God, doing these greater things than these shall you do, he said, because I go to my Father. Amen. He fills us with his power. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for this family of believers. I thank you for the church. I thank you for this house of prayer. Lord God, I know that we're, we're small, just a small corner of, of something big. Lord God, that you have put together, that you call your church, your body. But Father God, you've given us certain things to do, Lord God. And, and, it's, and it's in the vision of what you've called us to do. And I thank you, Lord God, Lord, that you're calling a people together, Lord God, an awesome people filled with your power. Lord God, and you're making provision. You provide, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for 2009. 
but 2009 has come and gone. It's come and gone. We thank you for everything that we got to do. We have awesome, awesome memories of things that happened in 2009 that will never happen again. We've, we've stood shoulder to shoulder with people that have gone on to their reward. Praise God. They're with you right now rejoicing. The Lord, we're still here. And we have a certain number of things to get done. Lord God, and now it's 2010. Lord, we've determined, praise God, we're not gonna, we're not gonna slow down. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Lord, we realize we can't do everything. But Father God, fill us. Fill us with power. Fill us with purpose. Most of all, fill us with your love, Lord God. Fill us up, Father God. Lord, help us not to lose vision. Help us, Lord God. Lord God, not to, to grow weary, not to faint, Lord God, but help us, Father God, to mount up with wings as eagles, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. I need supervision. I need you, Lord God, to be Lord of my life. I need deliverance. I need some healing in my relationships. I need some healing in my finances. Lord, and your word says that if I would acknowledge you in all my ways, that you'll direct my paths. Lord, that you'll put this broken mess back together again. Lord, I'm just is that you? Is that you? Would you come? Would you come this morning? Jesus is standing at your heart's door knocking. Would you open it? Would you open it to Him? Would you come to Jesus? There's people up here that's willing to pray with you. Amen. This altar is open this morning. If you need Jesus, would you come as we worship? If you're ready for that next step of to be baptized, and what that saying is, I don't care who knows that Jesus is my Lord. I don't care who knows. I want the fact I want the whole world to know that Jesus is Lord and Savior of my life. And I'm following Him. He's my Lord. And if you're ready to take that step, would you come? Ladies, come over here to your left. Men over here to your right. We'll have ushers there waiting to attend you. And you can be baptized this morning. Amen. Let's worship God.